Hello, everyone. I'm Jason Perez. And I'm Wesley Long. And we're bringing you a fresh new take on disaster preparedness. Welcome to Disaster Class. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Disaster Class. I'm Jason Perez. And I'm Wesley Long. And Wesley, you know what the bell means. That's it. Class is in session. Class is in session. Well, we are very excited about this episode. Yeah. Um, we have a special guest with us, Sherry Henderson. Uh, Sherry's a good friend of mine, and uh, we met actually doing our... Um, completing our master's in emergency and disaster management. So we were in the same program. Sherry, welcome to disaster class. Welcome, Jason. My name is Sherry, as you can see. I'm so happy to be a part of this. Yeah, we're awesome. looking forward to it. Yeah, we're really yes. excited to, to talk with you, especially because you have a, a very um, unique. Um, unique and exciting yeah. story. Mm -hmm. Um, so we're really, uh, um, excited to dive into that, yeah. but as I mentioned, so Sherry, you and I were in the same emergency and disaster management program, uh, together at Metropolitan College of New York. Um, now mm -hmm. as part of our, our study as part of the program, uh, we had to complete a project known as a constructive action. Um, and so for those of our listeners, basically what that is, is rather than having to complete and write a, a long and boring thesis, a constructive action allowed us to take what we had learned throughout the program and apply it into a real world setting. So um, we had to have a sponsoring organization that we would work with throughout the length of the program. Uh, we had to evaluate our sponsors risk. We had to develop a custom tailored um, emergency plan for them. We had to design and conduct an exercise to test the uh, efficacy of the plan, as well as the ability of the members to be able to follow it. So Sherry, um, so for your constructive action, who is your sponsor? So for my constructive action, my um, sponsor was um, Co-op City's Emergency Department, which I worked along with the fire safety director throughout, actually throughout my whole um, CA for maybe like three, I want to say like three semesters I worked with him. Nice. Excellent. And so for our listeners who are, are not in New York, um, could you explain a little bit about what Co-op City is? So Co-op City is a, a development that has about 35 buildings. And in those 35 buildings, we have different setups. Each building is set up differently. We have the Chevron, Triple, triple Core, and the townhouses. So my CA was done um, in the Triple Core building which is about 26 floors. And we, the buildings are non combustible. So we normally, if we have a fire, the fire will not spread. It normally just stays in that one area. Um, Corp City has been around for, I think since like the late sixties. And the purpose of that build, building Corp City was so that middle-class can have a form of a nice resident, but low cost, place to live. So that's why most people, they flung, fling to Co-op City and the yarding, everything is beautiful. Nice. So residential yep. housing, um, middle class. So good. Excellent. So that you were working with them throughout the whole, you know, span those three semesters. So, so as I mentioned, part of our, our constructive action was performing a hazard identification and risk assessment. So what did you find in your risk assessment of Co-op City that was um, the greatest risk that you were going to work with? So in doing my CA, my the greatest risk that I found was internal fires. So to confirm this, I did meet with um, Co-op City's local. We have our own um, police and fire department. So I met with Ladder 61 and they confirmed with me that in Co-op City, Internal fires were our most risk, most risk, and the internal fires were normally done or started in the bedroom. In the bedroom, and then they said that most people who are caused with the fires are those which are most um, vulnerable population, which is 65 through 95 years old. 
So after speaking with them and then talking with the fire safety director, I decided to do my and build my CA around the most vulnerable population in Co-op City. So then my focus was scaled down. Instead of doing all of Co-op City, I just focused on the triple core building, which was at 140 Death's Place. Gotcha. So that was going to lead into my next question. Then once you uncovered that risk, uh, what type of plan? So could you say kind of specifically what type of plan you developed for the occupants? Right. So the plan that I developed was a fire prevention plan. Gotcha. And the purpose of this fire prevention plan was since I knew now that we have internal fires and how they start. And we, and I also found out that most of the fires started from individuals smoking and falling asleep while smoking. Mm, mm. So the plan was built around what are the safety precautions that we can take? What are things that we should know and do in order not to have or minimize or mitigate by internal fires? Nice. Nice. So you started initially the, so you, you focus primarily on the prevention aspect. So, Yes. not even it being an issue to start. Um, but I think, did you also include some um, some things that they can do if there was a fire in the building, some steps and some actions they could take as well? Correct. So what we did was in the plan, we I, out, I outlined everything in the plan as far as what they should do in the event or things that they should have in their apartment. So for them to check to see if they had the smoke alarm, fire extinguisher, Anything for small fires, kitchen fire, and even saw in the bedroom, something that they can pretty much minimize or take care of themselves where it's not to a, a large um, fire. Wow. So some of those things I outlined in the plan. And then I also outlined like things that they maybe didn't even know and how I did this. When I spoke with them, I taught and I asked them, what do they know about fires? Do they have what precautions that they should take in order a fire start in their apartment? What should you do? So communication, who should you call? How should you call them? Where do you have the information? What in the event you're in the fire and someone, your neighbors, do they have your information? Are they able to contact your family if need be? So all of these things was pretty much in the plan and brought out during our training. Wow. That sounds very, very awesome. comprehensive. It does. Right? Very comprehensive. So um, how did you train? Um, so you, you, you wrote the plan. You, you performed a risk assessment. You wrote the plan. So how did you go ahead about training um, the occupants? So once the, um, so once the fire prevention plan was completed, what I did was I revisited all the neighbors and introduced the plan to them, gave each one a copy, asked them to review it. They said they was going to view it. And then I asked for their thoughts, according, you know, what was in the plan. And most said that it was easy to understand. They knew what it was talking about but it was some good tips, things that they haven't thought about themselves. So that was making sure who to contact, what should I do? Should I have a to-go bag? All of these things was mentioned in the plan. So once we did that, then I said, okay, so we're going to meet and I want to get everybody's thoughts as to what we should do for the next step, which is our the tabletop exercise, which is a discussion-based exercise. Nice. So before we get to that tabletop, I have a question just mm -hmm. as an everyday person. Um, mm -hmm. This sounds like literally this is a lot of work for you as a manager, right? It sounds like you had to, you had to put through all the planning, all of the figuring out, lay out the plan. And then it sounds like you had to go to each individual to get them to have that individual buy-in so that they had yes. that opportunity to personalize that plan. So you're getting a lot of face time with these residents, which I think is a great thing. But my question is, did you get any pushback? Were, were there any any individuals who were less than less than extremely willing to work with this plan of someone else putting this plan on them? I mean, I could see that going a couple of different ways. Yes. So so happened most most of the shareholders, which we call them shareholders, mm -hmm. most of the shareholders were cooperative. Most of them were in. And they was ready. They was ready Beautiful. to do it. And then I had maybe two, which um, it was a family. They from Russia. And they was like, well, you know, um, I'm not going to have any time. Um, um, I don't know if I'm going to be ready for this. I don't have time to read. Wow. I'm not I'm going to be busy. And I was like, well, I just want you to review the plan. 
and then give me your thoughts and I'll check back with you. All right, I'll I'll see if I'm I'm gonna be available. Wow. So that and that that pretty much was it, but everybody else was pretty much on board with doing it. That's fantastic. Everyone else that no pushback for most of the majority of the um um shareholders. Good. I mean I'm glad there was no pushback, but it is kind of funny, even for the few, right? Let's say the one percent, let's say that gave pushback. Yes. It's like after you as the emergency manager went through all of this time, effort, research, talking to the fire chief, getting the data, all they had to do was read and comply and still push back. Like I'm just flabbergasted by that. <laughs> after all of the work emergency managers put through, mm -hmm. we individuals, us and shareholders, right? Us people in the community, mm -hmm. families. Mm -hmm. Right. We still have to play a part. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, exactly. sorry. I'm not going to get on a rant exactly. about that, but I just exactly. think it's interesting. And, 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 and you know, and I did also express to them that I um, fit the the number was 57 percent, 57 percent of internal fires in the community are pretty much done in the bedroom with people smoking, right. falling Preventable. asleep, whether in the chair, in the bed, yep. they fall asleep with a lit cigarette. Preventable. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. It's good numbers. Mm -hmm. Great numbers, right? It's great to have that data. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just crazy there's sometimes pushback. Yeah. How many um, participants did you have that you worked with? So we had, I want to see. All together, we had about maybe 18. Okay. About 18. Probably mm -hmm. about 18. A decent size probably group. about yeah. 18 and one of um and the the shareholder that i thought was going to attend she didn't she wasn't feeling well and then the two who gave a little pushback they was the first ones there beautiful wow okay that's great right <laughs> that's so great. when it when it really mattered right. it was time the to first show one up, there they yes showed up. they was the first one that showed up for the um the first one showed up Wow. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. So you, you've you alluded to it already a few times, um, but so the next step was conducting an exercise and we, we call it a tabletop exercise that we actually performed. So could you just mm -hmm. explain to our listeners what exactly a tabletop exercise is and what you had to do as part of that? Right. So what I did was because they too didn't know what a tabletop exercise was. So I explained to them that, okay, so now that you have the plan, we want to see how we can put this into work if something was to happen, if you was to have a fire. So a tabletop exercise is a discussion-based exercise, which will you discuss and play out what your plan is. So since our plan was fire prevention, we wanted to discuss things that we can do to prevent internal fires. And then they was, everyone was like, oh, okay. So, okay, I think I can do this. I can think I can be a part of this. So we was able to sit down, have a discussion. And then we would discuss everyone roles in the, in the event of an emergency and how they will respond during an emergency or a particular emergency, which would be eternal fire, internal fire. Right. That's awesome. Yeah. So instead of a live event where people would be moving from point A to point B inside a structure, Right, which is a mm -hmm. style of mm -hmm. exercise and training that happens. Mm -hmm. A tabletop is, is discussion based, literally people sitting at a table and yes. verbally going through the scenario together. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very yes. cool. Very cool. Yes. Very cool. Yes. Nice. Yeah. So did you get any pushback from the residents with that? How did that tabletop exercise go? So actually the tabletop went well because Good. I used uh, um a scenario of a husband and a wife at home and the husband is sleeping in the living room and the wife is in the bedroom and the wife is the one that falls asleep smoking a cigarette. So what will we do? Right. And their response would be, you will check and see because what happens is if that was to happen, he couldn't get up because he was bed bound. Mm. So how would the neighbors assist to get into the apartment. Wow. So they all had different kind of um, answers, different responses, um, knock on the door, um, maybe locate a family member, call, dial 911. So they all was very engaging, very interactive. 
So they was pretty much on board with the whole arrangement, actually. That's beautiful. And it builds community, right? It's individuals yes. who, as neighbors, they yes. may have lived next to each other for any amount of time, but may not have actually spoken mm -hmm. to each other, right? They could be ships passing in the night, maybe see each other exactly. in the hallway. But this exactly. is a nice way to build a sense of community and well-being as well. That's that's really cool. That's awesome. Yeah. And actually, that's what I did. I um, As they all came together, I had each one introduce themselves and say how long they have been living in the community, mm -hmm. which, you know, it warmed up the room Absolutely. and everybody. Yeah. So that was that was definitely a great, great, great exercise. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's, that's cool. cool. So this was a planned um, opportunity yep. for them to enact the plan, right? Theoretical. To, to a theoretical, yep. hypothetical situation. Mm -hmm. But shortly after your exercise, your participants had an unplanned opportunity to execute the plan. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Yes. So two weeks after our exercise, I'm in my apartment and I was like, I smell smoke. Oh no. And I'm walking to the door. I'm like, wait, I smell smoke. And I opened up my door and like only part of the hallway was filled with smoke, which was like along the elevator bank. I mean, when I tell you filled with smoke, so what happens? All of the other shareholders came to their door and they said, I just want to check, make sure everyone is okay. And they knocked on each other's door. Oh my then they checked the exits to see if anything was um, going on in the hall, in the, um, the stairwell, mm -hmm. nothing was going on in the stairwell. The smoke was coming from the elevator bank. So what they did, they said, all right, so what we're going to do is go back into our apartments. We're going to put something to the door so that the smoke doesn't come into our door. And we'll call and check to see what is going on. Wow. So then they was calling me and I'll say, well, I checked. And they said, we don't need to leave the building. Stay inside our apartments, which is what we learned. Stay inside your apartment. Until further notice. Wow. So that was great. So the next day I did call the um, emergency um, department to find out what exactly happened. One of the tenants had threw a lit cigarette down a compactor. Oh, man. And, and so therefore the fire, which since we was on 24, we only got the smoke. Wow. Okay. But the fire was low, which no one had to evacuate the building. Wow. So you you create this plan, the sense of urgency, also combating the sense of urgency. You create this sense of community, well-being. The shareholders are involved. Two yes. weeks later, there is actually a fire event in that building. Yes. That's insane. Yes. What are the yes. chances? That, yes. That was insane. That's 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 huh. almost unbelievable. But I guess now the question is, going back to those shareholders, what types mm -hmm. of reactions did you get from those who participated in the exercises? <laughs> it was unbelievable. It was like, oh my goodness, Sherry, this training was so timely. We need to do this training annually. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they were so excited. They that's... was like, because... Now they were mentally prepared for right. whether it was something small scale as that, yeah. they were still mentally prepared. Yeah, that's so it was definitely, definitely, definitely the value great. of that training. Yes. I mean, it's yes. it's tough because a lot of times with a lot of the things we talk about when it comes to preparedness and it comes to mitigation, we know that there's a price point, there's a cost involved. Sometimes these things aren't free. Totally get that. To have the services of an emergency manager to come in to create a comprehensive plan for your your place of dwelling or your place of business, that's not going to necessarily be free. There's going to be a cost to that. And then when they are done, the things they outline for you to continue to do to have further mitigation, there might be a price point to that. And I we get that. But mm -hmm. look at the value on the back end. Yeah. Imagine exactly. you could take this course before a major event hits you so that you're just in a much better place to manage that after. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm I'm blown away by this right. experience, Jerry. Oh, yeah. yes. Yes, because they, they received the free, even though they did sacrifice some of their time, mm -hmm. but mentally they said that they were prepared. That's it. So they knew how to react. They knew how to respond. Yep. They thought about what they should do next. Yep. They were instinctually so, ready. Yeah. Yes. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah, and it's it's uh, and some people they they forget that the mental the mental component of it, right? It's okay, yeah, we're planning for the physical things, but when that actually that event happens, you're going to be so much more mentally prepared to deal with it and there's not going to be as much of that panic factor of the people exactly. who didn't take the time to plan. Right. So and then the exactly. back end trauma. Yeah. Right. All exactly. of that right. is being mitigated. Exactly. By yes. Mitigating. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because you're going to think, okay, so I need to respond. How should I respond? Right. Oh, I know how to, I should respond now. Yeah. I need to call. Yep. I need to do this. Yep. Yes. Mental organization is so key in times of chaos and emergency. Yeah. So the, those who participated in your training and exercise, they obviously see the value. Right. And if maybe they saw the right. value before, yes. but after going through that event, they definitely saw that. And just the fact that they want to now do it annually, I think tells us That's that. huge. <laughs> yes, yes. They um, were, when I tell you, they were extremely excited, extremely excited, because it was like, wow, this was like so timely. Yeah. Yeah. So timely. So here's a question. And I don't know if you've gotten a chance to talk to anybody who did not go through your training or exercise, any reactions they might have had? Oh, actually, no, I haven't gotten a chance to talk to um, the um, one shareholder that um, did not attend, the one that was not feeling well. I haven't spoke with her, no. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure, I'm it, sure yeah. word is spreading, though. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's the other nice component. You've Those who did go through it, they're like, this is this is was really valuable, oh, yeah. very much needed, and they're going to be talking it up. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. And so exactly. maybe the, maybe there is those who maybe had the opportunity to participate and they're like, eh, you know, but um, yeah, maybe and even other floors. Right. Like I'm moving it down to other floors to prepare those shareholders. Right. Like that mm-hmm. would be interesting to like building wide now. Like, yes. yeah, we should probably put something together. And that, that would be for anybody that lives in a condo, <laughs> condo association, a home, mm-hmm. a neighborhood. Right. The value is Mm-hmm. Evident and clear, yeah, that planning and mitigation pays off. Yes, mm-hmm. and also, and it's so funny that this the way this happened. Like I noticed now, because I've been there thirty years, mm-hmm. and they put a monitor in the lobby, and in the on the screen, like the screensaver, talks about. Fire safety. Yeah. Mm. I've been there 30 years. Yep. And 30 now. years. They just installed a monitor. And I'm I'm positive all of this was from result. my meeting with the fire safety director. 100%. That's awesome. Well, also, kudos to you for yeah. making your class project, um, utilizing your class project to make your personal living space better mm-hmm. and more prepared yes well definitely. played just well played right because yes. ma- so yes. again like, like think about that right there's value mm-hmm. in that you had an opportunity yes. for doing something that was a requirement for school and you said if i have to do something let's do something that's going to benefit me and where i live so well played chair yeah well it, played yes and hopefully Definitely. that that uh, just becomes much more contagious, and you're going to get it. a lot more buy-in as time goes on, yes. and as you yes. you know maybe mm-hmm. if you're continuing doing this yes, project, that would be and, great. Yeah, that would be great. Yes. So, and I think this is a really good um, example, a great story for our listeners because our listeners they're not emergency managers, right? right? They haven't been you know classically trained on how to. Yep go about this whole process, but the process is not difficult to do. And that's what we're trying to do is just teach yep. and train individuals to just, okay, identify your risk. Once you've identified mm-hmm. your risk, let's, let's create a plan, put it down on paper, then exercise it, practice the plan. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. when that event, if hopefully it doesn't happen, but hopefully. if it does, you're going to be ready to go. Yep. And it's not a difficult yes. process. Um, and the one that we teach in our community emergency planning class for those, if they haven't taken it yet, I yep. mean, it's a great opportunity um, to just learn all the steps to do it yourself. So, yep. but just a, a really excellent example, Sherry, of just actually seeing this play out in real life yeah. and the value of planning ahead. And, of the, yes. Yeah. Yes. So great value in planning ahead. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Sherry, thank you so much for uh, coming on and and talking to us about your project and about this experience. And um, yeah, we wish you all the best in your, in your future endeavors and hopefully we'll have to, uh, we'll get you on again. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you so much guys. It was great. All right. When you need an emergency plan, you need Doberman emergency management. 
Whether you're buying a home and want to know about your local hazards or you're a professional needing additional support, Doberman Emergency Management can help. Visit DobermanEMG.com today to learn more. Disaster Class is brought to you by Instinct Ready, whose mission is to educate, prepare, and equip individuals, households, and families for disasters through quality education and premium products. Use promo code DISASTERCLASS at InstinctReady.com for 10% off site-wide. Well, Wesley, that was quite an experience, quite a story. Um, Wow. Just really showing the value of planning and training and... Yeah, that's it. Plan ahead. Plan ahead. Because anything could happen at any time. And to be prepared is better than to not. Right? Can't say it better than that. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Well, before we conclude this episode of Disaster Class, as always, there is homework. That's it. Please make sure you like and subscribe um, to Disaster Class. Leave us that five-star rating because we know how much you appreciated the show. Um, and, you know, please let us know in the comments anything that you learned or appreciated with this story of Co-op City and the timeliness <laughs> of preparing and mitigating in advance. So, please, five stars, like, subscribe, comment. Yep, absolutely. And as always, if you have a question, you have a preparedness tip, a, a disaster story to share, send us an email at Instagram at um, disasterclass at instinctready.com or drop us a message on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, or LinkedIn. And doing so will put you in the running to be featured on the show and win some cool stuff. So thank you so much for listening to this episode of Disaster Class. Stay educated, stay prepared, and stay equipped. We'll see you next time. Disaster Class is part of the Readiness Lab, the home for podcasts, webinars, and training in the field of emergency and disaster services.